Hello and welcome to Mark's Miniature Monday. Today we're going to be looking at this. I don't want to say it's glorious because I did it, but I think it kind of is. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'll give it a pretty good. A pretty well, good. That's, well, as, that's as good as it gets from this guy. No, no, no. You see, once you tell us how you did it and reveal the mystery, the then mystery. it can become glorious. Okay. Like, wow. They're not just trees. They, these are not just trees. Wow. These are handcrafted trees. Um, okay. Nice. So this scene, what is this scene? Yes, yeah, so this is a scene representing the retreat from Moscow. So this is Napoleon being really dumb and deciding he'll go into Russia and gradually his army of like 600,000 being depleted to about 100,000 and then going, maybe we'd best run away. Yeah. It's getting cold. It's getting cold. Um, like Russian winter. <laughs> yeah, so this was inspired by these pretty awesome new North Star mm. figures. Uh, so this is for Shakos and Bayonets which is an expansion to muskets and tomahawks. They've got the French, and they've also just brought out the Russians as well. We have the Russians somewhere, somewhere in the building, around. and uh, maybe getting to paint some of those at yes. some point. So the interesting thing with this, to some extent, is you didn't paint the figures. No, I didn't. These no. are North Star's figures. We blagged them, we were taking photos, and yep. you went, I'm going to make a base. While them. we had them for some photos, we thought, let's do something fun with this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've made this scene. The cannons, by the way, before we oh, yes. uh, forget. These are from Victrix. Yes. Yep. Uh, and the figures in this scene, <clears throat> They pop out. So they you've do. made it so yeah. they can still be used for gaming. Yeah. And I, I mean in theory you could fill these gaps and use this as a terrain piece. And as in, well. even temporarily you could you could it can be used for both. So you can just get some of the snow powder, fill it, and then empty it again, and it can go back to being the diorama. Yeah. So it's quite versatile as a piece in that sense. Um, so this is this was for our facing the elements theme, which yep. was WI four twelve. Yep. There's an article on this, but we thought we'd just take a look at it in video form mm. and you can show people and we've also got a few extra snow products that you use that you're going to talk through yeah so first of all what i want to talk about before we get jump in and start talking about the snow products is very quickly because we did raise as an issue with the trees yeah so these are actual real trees which obviously not full <laughs> full form trees these are aspects twigs branches of trees from the war games illustrated car park yeah which one morning i went out with a pair of clippers and i just started butchering them <laughs> and, uh, and came back in with with a, a heap of branches, and uh, and then thought, right, okay, now let's 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 make these into real trees. Yeah, so you've uh, kind of drilled bits into each other and fixed yeah. them together, right? Which... So I found effectively a skeleton, which would work effectively as a as a tree. And once I'd got that, yeah, I drilled holes into into its trunk, and uh, and then jammed in a new branch to create a structure which I'm happy with, uh, which looks more representative of a tree as opposed to just a branch, which yeah. I found on the floor. Um, and I think overall it looks pretty good. Yeah, they're really yeah. neat. And I think, we'll talk about it in a bit, but mm. putting the snow on it coming in from the angle yeah. adds that extra level of realism. Mm. And, and the little nodules and, and bits on the trees mm accentuate that snow placement yeah, and yeah. you painted the trees as well I did, I, you didn't just leave them in their natural form no i painted them as well in part because obviously if you're sticking bits of different branch together yeah. they will contrast far too much and, and it'll look strange so um but yeah gentle spray with the airbrush on there and um, just to tie them up to yeah. tie them together a little bit um, so nothing nothing too dramatic nothing which is beyond a kind of hobbyist yeah. Um, you know, just need to, need to see the tools and a, and, a, and a tree to go pick some branches from yeah, ultimately. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I think we'll skip over your recessed bases and things like yeah. that because that's all covered in the article yeah. and we really want to kind of get into the snow. But yeah. in a nutshell, you you fitted the figures in, you painted it, and then you've applied some really nice sort of scatter foliage and things mm. on there. A few little leftover shakos and some kit. Yep, and leaves, that kind of random bits. Yeah, and yeah. artillery sort of left behind yeah. as they're legging it. And then you got onto the snow. So you got onto the snow, which I got to use one of these. Which I'm not using. Little spatula. School. I'm not used in school. Yeah. And this, <laughs> it, honestly, this, this was a great thing to do. And it was using, I've picked up the right pot here. It was um, from a company called um, Precision Ice and Snow. And pretty much they specialize in ice and snow diorama kit. Yeah. They are pretty good for that. I would highly recommend checking them out. And, uh, and we got a whole assortment of things yeah, to play with. Because um, you've got like a, a set with some other bits, because yeah. this is from them as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so everything, barring this, is from this one kit. So we have this one, which it comes as a paste, which you basically use this to smear on. And I'm a big fan of this one, because it gives you a lot of control. And when you're doing a diorama, that level of control is something which yeah. is, is kind of optimum. And also, using this, kind of smid onto the tree as well yeah so it gave you that level of uh, kind of precision and from the precision ice and snow company yeah, you've got your like yeah. your snow's coming from this angle isn't it yeah it's not 
all over, you've determined where it's going to be billowing yeah. in from. Exactly. So I decided the snow was coming from over here. So when I was uh, applying it, you kind of spread it on in that way. And it builds up uh, along the undulations of the surface and kind of snow drifts and that sort of thing. One of the key things to do, as, as James just pointed out, is when you're applying the snow onto the, uh, onto the trees is to spread it onto one side, not just all angles and yeah. everywhere. And it gives that element of realism as to think, how things look yeah. in nature, ultimately. I think the trees are really the most realistic yeah. looking thing on I mean, they are real trees. <laughs> that helps, but just yeah. that snow placement and the way it, it's clumped up in yeah. places really does does do the trick. Um, was it just that product you used on this one? So on, that, on this one, it was, well, I kind of used a little bit of this one as well. So this is called Crycell Extra, and it comes in a multitude of different kind of, uh, the, the granular kind of nature of it. So some's finer and some's more coarse. Right. Um, and using a sieve, which came in the same set, I gently sprinkled it over the uh, over the surface. And you can tell when you look at it, it's got a light dusting. Yeah. And I didn't want it to go too heavy on this one um, because I kind of wanted the, the patches where there wasn't any snow for it to not have any. Um, but it just gives it that light dusting effect. Yeah, um, and it, hopefully <laughs> the camera will pick it up, but it does have like a, a luster and a kind of sparkly shine It does have a really on. good, like that, yeah, that, that kind of sparkle which you would get in snow. Yeah. Um, which is another, it's a really, really effective product. Um, there are alternatives out there for when you're trying to create this stuff. Yeah, and one of them's a bit scary. One it? of them, which you have here, I'm not going to open this because <laughs> you need to, you need mask a mask, you need to mask up, definitely. So this one is from a company called Rival Crafts. And uh, so it's glass granules. You can see why you would want to wear a mask yeah. if using this. You do not want to inhale this stuff. Um, yeah, so it looks amazing. Yeah. When this stuff's used, it gives more of a sparkle than this one does. Well, um, I mean, it's glass, It's right? glass, you're exactly. You're going to get the, the most extreme sparkle possible. Also, it has a more translucent component to it, so yeah. when you're spreading it out, um, it really does have a kind of like blended finish to it as well. Um, but it's not quite as easy to use and, and create the snow drifts as uh, this, this little product is, yeah. is here. Potentially use them both together. That would be probably my recommendation. For sure. Whenever you're doing any snow diorama or snow effect, don't just go, this is the one I would use. Yeah, use, snow is use a combination. Different. Yeah, a vast, use a combination. Vast variety of types of snow. Yeah. And I say this with a girlfriend <clears> who comes <throat> from Canada. Trust me, there's a lot of different types of snow out there. Like, it's all they talk about. Oh, it's literally all they talk about is snow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's only two seasons in Canada: snow <laughs> and construction. There we, there we go. Um, so, also in that set from Precision Ice and Snow, as I've mentioned, we get this. You get the uh, Chrysal Extra. So you can either pop that on a miniature using this with the sieve. Um, you get a really good adhesive in the set as well, which you can apply with brush or even airbrush as well. Um, is the is the effect of that that it doesn't show up? It's, it doesn't, it doesn't show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's a real it's really thin as you, uh, you potentially can see on the uh, on the camera, um, and it, you know, exactly it's not got any finish on it. It's not glossy, and um, all you just it, and it picks up then it, the the kind of snow effect yeah. beautifully there. Um, they also have some really cool products in there. So you've got this one here, this um, ice and snow wash. And what have we got in that one as well? Is that another wash? Think, yeah, well, it's a uh, camouflage paint. Ah, okay. It's so difficult the, to make out. Yes, yeah, so the says. camouflage paint would be fantastic for using on a Panzer or oh, well, um, yeah. your kind of your, your armored vehicles in World War Two, which are maybe a Bastogne that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so that would be fantastic to do it on there. It will give a kind of um, kind of uh, that kind of chipped, washed finish on your vehicles. And this one as well is a snow wash where you paint it on and it collects in the recesses. Um, so I think we need to do more snow effect uh, yeah. videos at some point because there's so much to show and do with regard to these. Well, maybe we'll do a follow up, which is yeah. just these being applied onto something and you can see all the different yeah. effects. We'll quickly paint up uh, an armored vehicle. We'll yeah. airbrush it, get it quickly painted, and then we'll throw some snow effects on and see and see how it looks. Yeah, I think that's a good. cool idea. Yeah. Um, but let's not use the glass. We won't use the glass. No, let's use one. the glass, but let's okay. make sure we're all in hazmat suits when we yeah, do it. Definitely, definitely. You can see there's a whole host of different snow effect products to use out there. And there um, are more than these ones. And there's well. a heap more than these as well. Um, obviously, you've got your kind of traditional flock as well, which you can get in white, yeah. which isn't the ideal, it's dead easy to use, which is why that it's one's It's too good. big, really, isn't yeah, it? Like, it is, snow yeah. is very small compared yeah. to a human. These figures are quite small already, so flock is usually a little bit too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah my flock is bigger than a flake of snow, yes. generally, anyway. <laughs> so, though, when you compare it to 28mm miniature, it's yeah. going to be particularly large. 
also it lacks that sparkle yeah. that snow has as well. Um, oh, before I do finish up, I just wanted to say this um, this powder one. Like we said, not only can you apply it with uh, with the sieve um, and, the, and with the glue, you can mix it with silicon from a silicon glue gun type thing. Right. Yeah. And and it makes really cool. Uh, strong, thick, snowy paste, which you can actually apply much as you do with this one, with a spatula, you can smear it on and create all sorts of interesting snow kind of tundra shapes. Nice. And uh, one other thing, I don't know if you can see on this video, footprints. Oh yeah. yeah. So what did you use to push so, those in? So, just a miniature. Okay. I paint a miniature, once it was starting to set, you press it in. But what is particularly good about this product is if you forget to do it, you can get a miniature with its foot and you spray it with um, WD-40, silicon WD-40 and press it in and it will unset the snow oh, wow. effect and you can press through into there. Cool. That's cool. So, very cool. Yeah, so you can, you can finish it and you can think, actually, what is it lacking? It's lacking footprints. Mm. And you can throw that in. Nice. Cool. And you've, you've even added a few blood splatters Well, people who have been advancing ahead. Exactly, yeah. It's, uh, this is a trail of devastation. There's going to be blood. Yeah. There will be blood. There will be blood. And uh, there's, I didn't want to go overboard with it, but I still wanted to add a speck of red. Yeah. Uh, Maybe some troops have been attacked by like pursuing Cossacks or something like that. And yeah. I mean, they are fleeing for a reason. They are fleeing for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'd run away from a, uh, from a Cossack as well if I was in the condition that these uh, French were in as yeah. well. Yeah, not a nice time. No. Um, so th there you go. That's a bit of an overview of how I used some different snow effects on this, uh, on this little diorama here. And, and as we said, we're going to uh, look at some additional products and how we can use those in, in future videos. Um, so remember, if you gain anything from this, if there's anything that you found insightful, like how to use a tree, a real tree. A tree to make a tree. A tree to make a tree. Um, so give us a like, subscribe. If there's any comments, if you think I should have used a different product, or if you want to see me use a different snow product from a manufacturer, which you are a big fan of and you want to see it used in the future video, give a comment and, uh, and we'll give that a use. Bye bye. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.